some people, uh, first question uh, is, uh, some is re related to the future of uh, cellular uh, networking. Uh, some people working uh, in uh, big ICT companies uh, are speaking about uh, the disruption of cellular networking technologies uh, in the next two decades. They mean that the global coverage guaranteed by 2G and 3G cellular standards will end its age. There is a current of thinking that conceives of a different future of mobile networking where connectivity will be fractioned in a lot of local broadband connection islands extended in limited areas all around the users. What do you think about such an hypothetical picture? Do you agree or do you think that the global coverage will remain a key requirement in the future of mobile networking? Please. Uh, yeah, frankly speaking, uh, Claudio, I uh, uh, didn't get completely the point. I think that uh, both scenarios are absolutely possible, but I wouldn't give a preference to the second one uh, due to the fact that we, all of us, standing here are working towards the uh, extension of existing cellular networks and systems and extending both the theory and the practice of cellular networking. So I don't give any preference to uh, any of those scenarios. Okay. Well, uh, the global coverage of course remains an important aspect of, of, of cellular type uh, communications and networking. However, with the emergence of uh, you know, widespread and novel technologies, uh, a large number of maybe ad hoc and femtocell type providers could spring up. This really depends on how the big players, i.e. the telecoms and the operators, are going to absorb or are going to integrate that new technology or are they not going to integrate that technology. Uh, you may look back at what happened with the Wi-Fi technology, which basically completely bypassed uh, the big operators and took on a, an ad hoc type independent existence uh, to the point where basically every household kind of operates its own Wi-Fi uh, environment. This could very well happen in the cellular environment as well with the emergence of, of uh, femtocells. Or the opposite could happen if the uh, providers see the advantage of operating very small cells, they would uh, take over the, the technology and properly integrate that. I think it's too early to say which way it's going to go. What's really going to happen for sure is that the technology will be marching on and there will be a, you know, a slew, a, a large offering of new products and technologies that will be made available to, uh, to the benefit of the customer. And data rates and applications will continue to, to rise and be created at a very high rate. Let's see what Boris has to tell us. Basically, I agree with, with both of them. Basically, I will only add that we, what we have in front of us is a good opportunity to uh, introduce or to, I mean, to make possible new technologies and new ways to communicate, which maybe not are a, a substitute of the global coverage, but uh, they are not. Um, they can provide new ways to communicate among among selves or with the with the environment. So I think that both options are completely complementary, and let's hope that. Uh, in that sense, there will be an opportunity to discover and to, and to learn new ways to communicate using wireless communications. Thank you very much for your answer. The second question is more technological and is a question that many people buying iPhone or smartphone are asking. When new generation uh, wireless standards uh, will become commercial. Uh, 
does uh, this new generation uh, technologies uh, provide uh, uh, really provide to users uh, high quality multimedia services on, on uh, portable handset, uh, broadband uh, for all uh, and so on. That is the dream uh, of people uh, uh, buying uh, uh, high cost uh, smart terminals uh, of new generation. What do you think about this? Yeah, actually I think I'm thinking that it is already happening right now. And if I uh, buy iPad or smaller laptop at the moment with a 3G connection, with a Wi-Fi interface, with a WiMAX, uh, sometimes already built-in interface, then I already have, uh, have an access to highly interactive multimedia services. Of course, depending on the coverage, uh, depending on my mobility uh, style of life, but any, anyhow, even nowadays, these services are already available. And uh, my, my reply to this question is definitely yes, generally yes. Uh, I, I think I tend to agree uh, with Alexei. You know, the future is already here. If I, if I pull my, my iPhone, I, I can pretty much do anything I like with it. I can download my files, I can find my position, I uh, can communicate, send SMSs, email, you name it. Uh, to a large degree, this is already reality. On the technological side, we're basically interested in providing ever faster data rates, ever higher speeds, ever better coverage. What kind of application some genius uh, in their garages will come up with is uh, really too early to tell and, and, and may take us by surprise. Uh, these things are very difficult to predict and are a complicated interplay between the technology that's available as well as the potential applications that may be created. I, I think as engineering scientists, our job is to make the technology available as a playground for uh, all of these entrepreneurs out there to come up with all of these great new uh, applications. And I would not be surprised if something completely new suddenly showed its face tomorrow and everybody jumps on it and it starts using up all of our bandwidth. Boris? Thank you. Well, basically, which is true is that these devices like these, mobile phones like iPad or like tables, have completely changed our way to access internet and, and to use, well, these network technologies. And how to get higher, I mean, the technology will evolve to provide higher speed, better bandwidth, more different contents with better quality. But maybe the, or the big change is the operation or the, the change or the, the way in what the society is using these technologies. Maybe now, what in few years will come is just an evolution of this of this uh, change which now are we are living now okay. a, a last question of uh, a dramatic uh, actuality and uh, i ask you a, a, a short uh, answer how do you rate uh, the negative uh, influence of international economic crisis uh, in the development of novel, tech of novel technologies for mobile communications. In your opinion, uh, how much companies and service providers will cut uh, their investment in new services and new standard technologies if they will cut uh, something? Uh, what's the, uh, your opinion about this? Uh, please, uh, Alex. It's a hard question. Uh, the most difficult questions among those three which we have been addressed so far. Uh, first of all, uh, there is no doubt in the serious consequences uh, of the economical crisis which has probably not been even started yet, but uh, is going to run more and more hardly in the following uh, months and uh, probably years. I don't think... Oh, you, you asked me to be short. It's very difficult to uh, speak about the influence of such a global thing on a, such a small thing, uh, thing like uh, operators' business 
or telecom business in general. I would say, of course, it will influence, of course, uh, to some extent, uh, we have to expect this, uh, but uh, I don't have any definite uh, predictions and cannot give any estimations. Look, I think we're talking about completely different timescales. Economists and the people at large uh, have a herd mentality, you know, and, and, and with this, the market as well. Market goes down, crises, uh, crises break out, we have an economic problem, jobs are being shed and all of that. So this, this goes up and down, forth and back. Science and engineering, on the other hand, you have a much steadier, uh, shall we say, cycle time new technologies get developed, if they're not being applied, if they're not moved into the market, into products in the next two years, they're going to be moved into products in the next five years. They'll be waiting for the appropriate investor, for the appropriate entrepreneur to, take, uh, to make use of them. The technology will be marching on. What kind of products you know, will show up and what kind of economic, in, in what kind of economic times this is going to happen uh, remains to be seen. I think what is here to stay is, is the, uh, the age of communications and information with ever new technologies and ever new devices and uh, whoever uh, you know, can turn it into an economic profit will, so, will do so big time because I think this is, this is really a, a, sustainable, uh, a sustainable industry and is, is very much the backbone of our modern society. Yeah, this is a quite a really difficult question and the answer, the answer, it's very difficult to predict, but uh, like other areas in the in current society, basically it's the people who has to decide how they will evolve. If the society starts to be more conservative, also don't want to buy or to change or to get new products, also the, the companies, the business will stop, will freeze, and the, maybe not the research or the new technological alternatives, but maybe yes the products or the the possible options about communications will remain will evolution will evolution or change more slowly thank you oh, okay uh, thank you very much uh, to our friend uh, and th that uh, allowed this uh, interesting uh, interview and uh, okay uh, let's hope that uh, this uh, overview will, uh, enli will enlarge the view of, uh, of people reading uh, the journal of UnityN. Okay.